television cavalcade. Feature stories from the parade of today's fast-moving events. This is Peter Roberts bringing you cavalcade reports on the role of crystals in today's science. Expanding tourism in Taiwan. Measuring reaction to the taste of food. And the scenic smoking. This girl doesn't know it, but she has something in common with many scientists. A deep interest in crystals. Diamonds may be a girl's best friend, but at Bell Telephone Laboratories, scientists take a friendly interest in all kinds of crystals and in all kinds of things about them. They're interested in the kinds of atoms and molecules crystals are made of. And in the ways those atoms and molecules fit together. They're also interested in how to grow crystals in the laboratory. A critical operation that can go wrong in any one of a thousand ways. Most of all, they're interested in the electrical, magnetic, and optical properties of crystals, and in their reactions to various energy fields. Finding answers to these questions, often with the help of computers, has already led to many valuable uses for crystals. This silicon crystal, for example, may not be as pretty as a diamond, but to scientists and engineers, it's a lot more precious. It's used to make tiny transistors and power rectifiers and solar cells for satellites. In fact, all these things were invented at Bell Laboratories as a result of intensive research into the nature and properties of crystals. Such research also led to zone refining, a method of producing the purest materials ever known to man, and to a means of growing quartz crystals far more perfect than any found in nature. These beautiful crystals aren't just ornamental. The Bell telephone system uses thousands every year for precision filters. One of the most challenging assignments crystallographers have today is to provide new types of crystals for lasers, which may be used in communication systems. Theoretically, such systems are capable of carrying millions of telephone conversations over beams of light. If your telephone voice ever does ride piggyback on a beam of laser light, chances are some new kind of crystal has made it possible. When Portuguese sailors first spied this land of forests and mountains, they called it Ila Formosa, the beautiful island. The Chinese, noting the topography of the island, called it Taiwan, Terrace Bay. Although Taiwan today retains its rugged beauty, it has become a bustling home for 13 million energetic people. Taipei, the capital city, is a modern metropolis which serves as the provisional seat of the Chinese national government. With first-class hotel accommodations available in the suburbs as well as downtown, visiting tourists are within easy reach of smart, exotic shops, which offer a wide variety of world-renowned Chinese handicraft items. The Sun Yat-sen Museum in suburban Taipei displays the largest collection of Chinese art objects. And of course, the Chinese have long been famed for their culinary arts, as well as for their opera. Taipei also serves as a focal point from which to investigate other scenic and unusual sections of this subtropical island. Longsham Temple in northern Taiwan is a favorite visiting spot for native as well as foreign tourists. Sun Moon Lake in the central part of the island is another gem of beauty and repose where the traveler can find peace and renewal. 
But perhaps the most unusual and unforgettable activity on the average tourist itinerary is a trip on the east-west Cross Island Highway. Cutting through the scenic Central Mountain Range, this highway is known as one of the wonders of the Orient. A land of lush, natural, subtropical beauty. A people with customs and traditions which have defied the ages. In the rugged beauty of the land, in the warm friendliness of the people, Taiwan has something unique for the tourist. For Taiwan is China. At the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry, the Food for Life exhibit established by Swift and Company is visited by more than two and a half million people each year. One section of the exhibit is devoted to poultry and live baby animals. Youngsters get a big kick out of watching the antics of the ducklings as they try to reach the food at the top of the slide. The little lamb and its mother are living examples of good nutrition and balanced diets. The baby chicks pop out of their shells right in front of your eyes. Good nutrition is shown and emphasized in the Food for Life exhibit. This museum, being the most widely visited institution of its type in the world, provides an excellent cross-section of the American public for sample testing. A recent addition is the Consumer Research Center, which gathers new information about the food Americans prefer to eat. These people are participating in an experiment that is important to all of us. It's about food. I have a question. I'd like to know how does a frankfurter compare in nutritive value, say, with a piece of steak? In general, equivalent servings of meat, such as beef roast, or steaks, or pork chops, contain the same nutritive value. Do you test other products here besides frankfurters? Products such as ham, bacon, sliced luncheon meats, dry sausage, and many others, like ice cream, cheese, peanut butter. The purpose of this unique research center established by Swift and Company is to give the consumer an opportunity to tell the food industry how they like their foods prepared and packaged. The results of these tests will help food experts gain new insights into the preparation and packaging of foods necessary for a balanced diet. There are so many different kinds of bacon on the market today. How can I tell which type to buy? Your taste preference will help you make that decision and tests such as these will help produce a more desirable product. What your youngster will eat now and in the future may be determined here, even though he's next door with some new acquaintances. Operating seven days a week, the Consumer Research Center at Chicago's Museum of Science and Industry will be providing the food industry with valuable clues in a heretofore uncharted area, the American taste bud. Ever have the urge to get out in the open, close to nature, get away from it all? Sure you have. That's why travel and camping have become one of the fastest growing fun sports of our time. All you need is some basic camping equipment and your car. There are park systems all over the country, and the roads leading to them are excellent. You can discover America best by car. For a start, let's go to the Smokies. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park is located on the border between North Carolina and Tennessee. There are plenty of campsites, wooded, open, hilly, by the water. Just select the one you want and move in. You'll find your fellow campers friendly, interesting, and from all over the country. You'll also find a wide range of camping gear, everything from simple sleeping bags to camper trucks. 
everybody takes a little different approach. But one thing is sure, setting up camp with today's modern equipment is fast and easy. And once you've moved in, home if you want them. What do you do in the Smokies? Well, you can take a dip in the cool, clear mountain streams and rivers. And you can make new friends from all over. Take a hike along some of the hundreds of marked trails. Maybe take a few pictures of a squirrel or a deer. And when you want to take it easy, relax. Just stay in camp and do nothing. You need a rest occasionally, particularly if you're going to make the trip up to Klingman's Dome. It's the highest point in Tennessee. You can see for miles in every direction. See the vast patches of mountain flowers, the blue haze that gave the Smokies their name. Then you can move down into the lush green valleys, go horseback riding. But camping isn't just park activities, it's taking in the exciting places nearby too. The best approach to this is to get some advice and good directions from a local expert. And then you're off. Flight Indians at Gold Rush Junction, just outside Gatlinburg, Tennessee. shopping for local handicraft at the country store on the Blue Ridge Parkway. You can look, too. On the North Carolina side of the mountains, watch the good guys and the bad guys shoot it out at Ghost Town. While you're in North Carolina, take in the frontier drama at the Daniel Boone Theater. Do some boating on Fontana Lake. Maybe even try your luck at some fishing. You might even catch your dinner. A lot of people do. You'll have some happy holidays in the Smokies. And you'll save enough money camping to take an extra trip or two. America offers many exciting, fun-filled faces to the automobile traveler. But the face of nature must certainly be one of the most satisfying. It can best be seen by camping. It's the way to discover America. Welcome to my hell. Look at this. These are all those films in the rusted cans that I took from my basement that I had saved from the Clio Award burnout building. No concept. Yeah, come on in. Right. This is all part of a collection that I have never gotten to in about 15 years. And the owner of the Clio Awards was in a drug deal, they burnt down his townhouse, and there, folks, is films that I have just pulled out of sales films, commercials, regional films, spot advertisements, a great history of television that uh, I've never been able to get to. And more, and more, all 16 millimeter films, half hour shows, more, more, more. Anyway, I suppose, the way life is. Ugh. 
Long trick coming out. And we are moving all this stuff out. Okay. Welcome to my nightmare. Wow. There's some vinegar smell, not deadly. And now we've got to pull the list out. Let's see what we're going to do here. 